Hello, in this video we're going to talk about evaluating limits. Uh, we're going to go over the methods and then this one, specifically method one. Uh, this method is called the direct substitution method. It's going to be a method that you use all of the time. Even with the other methods we're going to have, you're still going to come down to the direct substitution method. So let's go ahead and state it. If f of x is a polynomial, a rational function, a radical function, basic trig function, in other words, anything that's a nice function, something that you've probably dealt with uh, in algebra, uh, not like a piecewise function, because those have, you know, we've seen those, those can be weird. But basically any sort of nice function, and a, some specific x value, is in the domain of f, then we have the following, that the limit as x approaches a of f of x, now again, f of x is a nice function, uh, x approaches a and a is in the domain, then all we're going to do is plug in a, and so whatever we get when we plug in a, that is the limit. Now, we've already seen that happen in uh, the last few videos. So in this example, what's the limit on the function x squared minus 1 as x approaches 2? Well, we would look at it and say, okay, well, coming in from the left and the right, you know, we're approaching whatever this y value is, and then we check it out and we find out that that y value is 3. Well, another way we could have done this is just say, look, x approaches 2. Well, 2, that's definitely in the domain of x squared minus 1. There's nothing wrong with plugging in 2. And so if we plug in 2, then we're going to get 2 squared. That's 4 minus 1. That's 3. And so we could have gotten the, the limit from just plugging it in. And, uh, but you got to be careful that it is a polynomial, rational function, a nice function where, and this is the most important part, that a is in the domain of f of x. So let's start with this example. This is a rational function. Notice the dom domain of this function is every x value except for negative 14, because that would make the denominator 0, and that's bad. Um, but if x can't be negative 14, great, because I'm approaching 0. So, and 0 is in the domain of this rational function, so all I'm going to do is plug in 0. So we get 14 plus 0. That's negative 7 over 14. That's a nice number. That's negative 1 half. And so the limit of this function is negative 1 half. Okay, our next example, we have the limit as x approaches 5 of this uh, nasty-looking function. But notice that the only problem I'm going to have is when the denominator, 6x minus 29, is 0. Well, I'm approaching 5, and if I plug in 5, I get 6 times 5, that's 30. My, so that's 30. Minus 29, well, that's not 0, so 5 is in the domain of this function. So let's go ahead and just plug it in. We're going to get the cube root of 4 times, and then we're going to plug in 5. Let's go ahead and plug in 5. All right, and then we got plus 44 divided by 6 times, and then that's going to be 5 minus 29. And we're just going to evaluate that. So on top, that's going to be 20 plus 44. On the bottom, it's going to be 30 minus 29. So if you clean this up, on the top, that's 64. On the bottom, that's 1. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the cube root of 64, which is 4. So my limit of this function is 4. OK, in this example, we have another rational function. Uh, notice that the only value I can't plug into this is when x equals 4. Well, that's not what I'm approaching, so I'm OK. Uh, so we're going to plug in x equals 3. So we're going to get 3 squared minus 16 over 3 minus 4. So that's 9 minus 16. So that's minus 5 over minus 1. And that's going to be 5. Now say I was to take that exact same function. So the x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. Instead of approaching 3, I actually do approach 4. Well, let's see what would happen if I actually plug this in. So we're going to get 4 squared minus 16 over 4 minus 4. 
that's going to be 16 minus 16 over 0, I'm uh, sorry, 4 minus 4, which will be 0. But we're going to get 0 over 0. Now, does that mean the limit doesn't exist? The answer is, is that maybe it exists. When we get 0 over 0, that, that's going to be a, a problem, but we're going to have other methods that deal with this type of scenario. So, okay, we can't do x equals 4, but that makes sense because what did our theorem say? You had to be in the domain, and 4 isn't in the domain. So this method won't work, and we're going to have to try something else. Okay, in this example, we have this function, and x is approaching 3. All right, I have a radical on the bottom, but notice that the only time this is really bad is when x is negative 1, so, and I'm not approaching negative 1. So let's go ahead and plug in 3. So we're going to get 3 minus 3 over the square root of 3 plus 1. That's going to give me 0 over the square root of 4. Well, that's okay. 0 over the square root of 4, that's just 0. So my limit is 0. So I think we've done plenty of examples now. So what, what did we learn? If you have a nice function, and a is in the domain, then all you have to do is take x, x approaches a, so you take x equals a, plug it in, and that will be our limit. Now I have some examples up on the screen right now, so go ahead, try these limits out, and to find the solutions to these problems and more information about NIU, please follow the link down below. Good luck.